Hello, my name is Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of this book, Do It Yourself Loudspeaker Building. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos, you know I do a lot of car modification, aerodynamic modification, and so on, but I've actually been building speakers longer than any other hobby that I've been pursuing. I reckon I built my first speaker enclosure when I was about 10 years old, and as you can see, that's a long, long time ago. What I want to do in today's video is talk about how you can build a very simple, very effective speaker enclosure, which is spherical in shape. You don't have to make molds, you don't have to pour castings, you don't have to use fiberglass. You basically use two hemispheres, two half spheres, which you can buy off the shelf. Intrigued? Let's take a look. Now, this is the speaker that I'm going to cover its building. It's spherical in its enclosure shape, which gives the walls great stiffness and also has some advantages in terms of sound quality, less diffraction off any edges of the enclosure at the front. And it's cheap and easy to make, and you don't need woodworking tools. You do need some tools, but you don't need panel saws or, or veneering or any of those things which in the real world are so difficult. So what is it made from? Incredibly, it's made from two flower pots. They are made of a fiber cement, which is nicely acoustically dead. They are already hemispherical. So basically all you do is cut some holes and glue the two flower pots together. Does it work? It works exceptionally well. In the office in which I'm presenting this video, I have those two speakers, I listen to them frequently, and I'm always amazed at how good they sound considering how easy they were to make. So let's have a look at the construction technique. Now, here's one of the flower pots that you need to start with. So you'll need four of this shape. Obviously, the closer they are to a hemisphere, the more spherical your end enclosure design will look. You also want them to have adequate wall thickness in that fiber cement. You don't want them to be ultra thin, and obviously they need to be available. Color, color's up to you. You can see from my earmuffs here, you can get a bit of a scale for how big these flower pots actually are. Don't use clay. Clay will ring, and has quite resonant behavior. Use the acoustically dead fiber cement. The first step is to turn over one of those flower pots and grind the back face. Now, all these flower pots have got a flat base where they normally sit on the ground. We're gonna use one of those flat bases for mounting the speaker in, the driver in, and the other flat base, which is gonna be on the back, we can install a port. If we're dealing with a ported enclosure, we can install the crossover if we're using a crossover, etc. So to grind it perfectly flat, because it'll often have little feet on it as well, use a grinding disc in a grinder. Uh, lots of dirt and rocks and dust gets, get thrown up. So make sure you're wearing a, a mask and uh, goggles to protect your eyes. So you wanna flatten those surfaces on each of these. Here's what you've got when you've flattened it. You can see the little pebbles are now showing up, the little rocks are now showing through. And this is the surface in which we are going to mount our main driver. Mark the surface for the correct diameter hole that you are going to uh, cut out, and then you can cut it out. Now, if you use an electric jigsaw, and if you're prepared that the blade will get blunt after each hole, so you basically need a new woodworking blade each hole, uh, you can cut it out in this way. You are cutting through uh, cement, you are cutting through small rocks, you are cutting through fibers, and so, you know, as I say, the blade is gonna wear out pretty fast, but this is still the best way that i found to actually make these holes. Incidentally, that little biscuit that's been taken out the bottom uh, shows the thickness of the material. You can see it's quite thick, uh, and that gives it part of that stiffness, of course. So here's the hole cut out. If you find that you are meeting little pebbles with the jigsaw blade and that just stops you dead and you end up having to go around them, uh, obviously go around them on the inside of the hole and you can always grind it back or file it back. Very hard to replace material which is removed, much easier to remove material uh, by another means. Very hard to see here, but that arrow points to a hole that's been drilled through the material for the speaker bolts to hold the speaker in, in, in place, to hold the driver in place. Uh, I just use the normal uh, high-speed steel bit. I didn't use a masonry bit. Don't use a hammer drill or anything like that. You'll find that these things are, are too fragile. They will just crack. Uh, you wanna be a little bit careful, not go at it like a bull in a china shop. 
the surface that you have ground won't be dead flat. Obviously try to make it as flat as possible. So you'll need to use some sealant material under the rim of the driver. Here I've just used black silicon. Here's the back view. You can see I'm using an Alpine uh, car driver. Uh, I found them to be uh, very, very good drivers for their price. They come with a crossover if you buy a, a set of splits. Um, and here's the back. You can see the large vented uh, speaker magnet. But also what I want you to do is look at the four screws. Notice I'm using nylock nuts and washers. You don't want to over tighten these screws or you'll, again, you'll crack the enclosure. You want to just draw the speaker frame up against the outer part of the enclosure and have that sealant fill any of those gaps and then let the sealant dry and then maybe nip the screws up just a tiny bit more. What if you want to cut a port hole, uh, a hole for a, a vent? Um, don't use a hole, hole saw. Uh, I did use that once and it just wrecked the hole saw in moments. Uh, here I'm actually just uh, breaking bits off with a pair of uh, pliers in the shape of the uh, required hole. Uh, because you'll be using sealant around that, it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, it can be less perfect, if you like, than the hole for the actual speaker driver. This hole here, incidentally, is uh, the drainage hole from the original flower pot. Uh, we'll be covering that up in this application. So here's the inside view. I've uh, uh, glued the uh, port in place. I'm just using uh, UPVC pipe of the correct internal diameter. Of course, you don't have to have a ported enclosure. It can be a completely sealed enclosure, depending on the design of enclosure that you're developing. Um, here I'm using, as I say, I think it was a, a 50 mil port or something of that diameter. Now, the wire that connects to the driver needs to go out through, obviously, the, the wall of the enclosure and again, seal those things in place with, with a good industrial uh, sealant, a good industrial glue. Uh, as you'll see in a minute, it's best if you use a water cleanup industrial glue uh, because uh, it will make it a lot easier for the next step. Now, this step shows two things. We have put inside the enclosure um, uh, quilt wadding, that's what I use as my enclosure filling. It's really cheap, it's available from any dressmaking shop. Uh, you can use uh, official um, quilt wadding or official wadding from a speaker manufacturer. Um, so I've, I've arranged that inside, notice without blocking the port, and I've arranged it high enough that when you put the other half of the enclosure over the top, then the quilt wadding actually extends into the top half of that enclosure as well. You want the internal surfaces of the enclosure covered with an acoustically absorbing material like this. Now, the other thing to notice is I've put lots and lots of water cleanup glue, industrial building adhesive around the rim, because when the two halves of the enclosure come together, you want that to be absolutely sealed and a really strong join. Here, uh, the two halves of the enclosure are together. Obviously, you never get it apart again, um, so you really want to make sure you've done a good job before you seal it up and the arrow points to a witness mark, a chalk line that I drew earlier, because the enclosures, halves of the enclosures fit together better in one orientation than the other. So you just turn it around until you get the best fit and then mark it so that when you reassemble it, those uh, two halves are rotated in the correct relationship to each other. Now, you can see lots and lots of glue is smeared on the outside, but remember it's a water cleanup glue. So if you use a rag dipped in water and just go around the whole part, uh, around the whole edge, then you'll be able to clean up that join and it makes a really neat join. I didn't even bother painting it. I just left the natural color of the adhesive. It's just a, a line around the uh, periphery of the enclosure. On the back, uh, here's the port. You can see the rear view of the port. And I chose to mount the, uh, uh, the crossover here, the Alpine crossover. It's got adjustable tweeter levels. Uh, notice we haven't talked about where the tweeter is yet. Um, and, and that was uh, mounted there so I could easily adjust those tweeter levels until I got to my desired uh, balance. Where's the tweeter? Here it is at the front. Now, what I did when I was testing the development is I actually physically moved the tweeter around until I got to a position where I thought it sounded the best. And in fact, it is positioned a little bit forward of the main speaker. I had it moved back, I had it moved forward, I had it on the top, I had it underneath. I just got someone holding a long stick to move it around while I was playing music. And as I say, it's now mounted a little bit forward of the main driver, that gave the best sound. And the stand that I have uh, folded up uh, or bent up from square tube has a projecting tube on which the tweeter is mounted. 
What do they sound like? I think they sound absolutely exceptional. Uh, they have that wonderful characteristic of spherical speaker enclosures where they're not at all directional. If you shut your eyes, you, you can't really tell where the sound is coming from because it doesn't have those diffracting patterns coming off the front. Um, they've got plenty of base for their size. Uh, the the uh, actual enclosure design, the length of the port and so on was, was designed specifically for these speakers and that design has worked very, very well. And of course, they're so easy to make. You know, you're not trying to cut square sheets. You're not trying to get square joins. You're not trying to um, veneer or paint or any of those things because you're basically using things that are already three quarters of the way made. The book's called Do-It-Yourself Loudspeaker Building. I cover the design and uh, development of those speakers and a whole lot of other speakers in that book. And the book's really aimed for people who don't have all that woodworking machinery, which after all was most of us, and just want to get some good sound happening. Thank you.